Good morning children. This is your um, computer teacher Amrita Banerjee. Now children in the last video we have discussed till Wi-Fi and WiMAX technology. Now children in this video we will do the rest of the explanation of the first chapter. And so the next topic which we have is our global positioning system. Okay that means GPS. So children you all might be very much familiar with this device GPS. So that is mainly used to locate the position or the location of different of different people who are available over at the different places. So children, this GPS is nowadays installed in as in our smartphones, watches, car, everywhere. Okay, so it works with the global navigation satellite system that provides us the detail about the location, velocity and time synchronization anywhere on the earth. Okay, so over here children you can see a picture. This is the picture of how this person who is accessing the GPS service will get the information on his mobile. Okay, then he will get a map sort of and how he is supposed to proceed, which way he is supposed to turn. Fine. So all this information will be provided in this GPS device as in. Okay. So and now these facilities are available as said in our smartphone, cars and watches as well. Okay. So now children, this GPS actually works with the satellites which are present on the space. Okay. And these can have numerous applications. It can be used for a variety uh, of uh, applicational area it can be used by the military people it can be used by the government it can be used for the space purpose it can be used for different different uh, resource management and everything so it is kind of a wonderful uh, technology which has been invented okay so over here in this picture children you can just see a brief of the thing that how the satellites are uh, having a look over everything which is going on in the earth right from farming right from the uh, people sitting in the space certain uh, station right from the launch of the satellites or the rockets everything is being captured by the satellites which are present on the space okay so children uh, this gps actually work with the different different satellites which are positioned at the different location so these satellites actually form a constellation sort of like children we see so many stars in specific groups so what do we call them we call them the constellation of stars similarly children these Satellites actually make up a constellation sort of so though they, they are termed as the GPS constellation children. Okay, and this is how the satellite look like they, they have uh, expanded the look of the satellite and this is how the satellite at the space looks like. Fine. Now children, this is how the satellite will be receiving the signal from the space okay and it will be getting downloaded and any of kind of the information it can get uploaded to the space and then this gps services whosoever is accessing either in the uh, air, air aircraft or in the sea or in the land or by the military people or anyone anyone is use a, able to access this information through this Way. Okay, so this so shows actually how the deep GPS technology works. Fine. So now children here we are having a slide which is mentioning the different different uses of the GPS. It can be mainly it is used for the navigation purpose. That means it can be used for the marine. Marine means the sea people. Then automobile means uh, for the land. Aircraft means it, it's, it can be used to find some lost aircraft as well. Then wayfinding. Okay, hiking. Disaster relief. If someone has got stuck somewhere in very disastrous way. Even that person can be located then walking tours if you are going to some unknown place then eco burials this is also one of the application of the gps then we have military uh, applications for uh, troop accountability okay then coordination targeting these are the different different uh, application areas for this gps technology children okay 
so uh, next children we have after gps how the uh, mobile phones are getting connected to the internet now children mobile phones are not just simply nowadays those are very modern one we only don't only just talk on the phone we can listen to the playback music we can surf our uh, net we can send emails we can take pictures we can record videos mobile conferencing then we can communicate with people so now the mobile phones are actually kind of mini computers for us okay so they provide us with numerous applications and they have become the part and parcel of our life we cannot even imagine our life without the mobile phones okay so they are that's why it is called the miniature version of the computers okay so now children these mobiles can be connected through the internet via some Wi-Fi connection or some mobile broadband technology. Now children over here you can see this is the symbol of the Wi-Fi connection. Suppose you have been to some zone which is hotspot as we have discussed hotspot means the spot which is having high internet access. So there will be some of the Wi-Fi's available. If you get to know the password you can switch on to that Wi-Fi zone and then you can access internet you can gain that services okay. and. Uh, then children if you go for this mobile broadband that means you will have to take the paid subscription of some company okay and that company will provide you the services for the internet either it is 2g 3g or 4g okay so there are many mobile broadband companies available right from we have airtel bsnl vodafone uh, idea everything we have different companies that provide us with this facility Okay, so now children, this mobile uh, broadband can be either 3G or 4G. These are the two technologies right now which is going on. 3G is third generation and 4G is fourth generation. So children, this 4G is 500 times stronger than this 3G. That means 500 3Gs would compose one single 4G. This is so, so fast. Okay, and here uh, in this table, children, it shows the difference between the bandwidth frequency and architecture and the signal quality and everything difference between the 3g and the 4g and of course you can see that 4g is much much better technology than our 3g okay 3g is also good but 4g is very fast it is and that's why it is termed as the ultra broadband okay now children after this uh, 3g children we have the next topic which is our cloud computing children now what is this cloud computing children uh, now the computers uh, everything is getting digitalized that means oh, all people are getting onto this internet having storing a so many services are being provided so children uh, this cloud computing actually work on the concept that all the data instead of having installed some a uh, server and network as in uh, privately everything getting uh, stored in the cloud okay so it is the internet computing where this cloud is the term used for the internet okay cloud computing as in like internet computing what okay. it it provides all storage sort of services like server services storage mobile application and database services but it is shared one that means it is not uh, it is not for uh, proprietary that is it is not the property of one single person it is shared one and anyone over in the earth can access to the cloud different different cloud uh, which are available and they can take the as in services and they can pay a nominal charge okay so this has actually simplified the cost and in installation of this computing internet computing okay so this is one of the technology which we are having that is the cloud computing and children here in the picture you can see how the cloud is providing all sort of services over here inside the cloud and this can be accessed through phone tablet desktop server laptops any of the electronic goods would be able to access these services which are available in cloud okay so all sort of things can be stored in cloud and this is shared one anyone from anywhere can access to these services fine so now children last topic we have these are the few ad advantages of cloud computing so let us see see people in the worldwide can access cloud from anywhere with some 
internet connection either 4G, 3G or 4G and there is no need to spend big money on hardware and software and other licensing other stuffs okay then we can access the data anytime and from anywhere we needn't have to sep sep uh, carry separately our data to some place we needn't have to carry some extra burden for the data it can be accessed from anytime and anywhere and it takes very few people to do more work on cloud than having the time wasted on the hardware and the software issues so children uh, here we complete the explanation of our first chapter hope uh, you have understood the concept okay so that's all for today children uh, thank you so much next topic we will discuss in the next video thank you so much